Iran has said, listen, I have to find a way to survive. These sanctions that have now come back in play is hurting us and hurting our economy, so we have to do something. A ship was seized for Iran carrying oil, and they seized that ship, so Iran has now seized the ship from Great Britain and has hoisted its flag on the vessel. Um, so that's what's happening there. Um, for those who are li living somewhere under a rock, if you don't know, you will now know that Boris Johnson is now the Prime Minister. And he gave a speech, his first speech as Prime Minister, which, have, which was a very defined speech. And he is of the view that he can deliver Brexit, a Brexit deal, um, as opposed to his predecessor, who some just could not deliver on Brexit. He's not ruling out a no deal Brexit, but there are many persons who, is op who are opposed to a no deal Brexit. Now, you may ask yourself what that has to do with me here in Jamaica, um, the mess that the UK has found themselves in, the farce that the UK has found themselves in. The reality is, if the pound <laughs> crashes, it's going to affect our economy just the same way if the US um, dollar crashes, it will affect our economy. And so it will have economic implications for what will happen to the Caribbean, Jamaica, and the rest of the Caribbean. Um, so that is something to watch as well. Uh, if for those who are following politics in the US, Robert Mueller is going to be testifying about his findings regarding collusion between Donald Trump Donald, and Donald Trump's campaign and um, Russia. And persons have been salivating and rubbing their palms, waiting for Robert Mueller to give his testimony. Well, for those who are following, you would have heard that the Trump administration wrote to Robert Mueller to tell him that there are certain information that is privileged. You can't talk about it. And so you must only stick to what is in the report. Well, we await the fireworks that is going to happen in the U.S. Senate as soon as Robert Mueller has, um, has begun to, to give his take. And you have to remember that Mr. Mueller didn't exonerate the president as the president would want everybody to believe. <laughs> he did not exonerate him. What Mr. Mueller said in his press conference is that he was restricted from bringing any kind of criminal charge against a sitting president. And therefore, it was not part of his consideration because of that restriction. He's not saying that he, couldn't, he didn't have enough to charge him. He's saying he could not consider it because he's restricted from doing it, from bringing charge against a sitting U.S. president. And so that is something that we should watch. And in fact, many persons are saying that this whole episode with Trump calling the four congresswomen, um, labeling the four congresswomen as, as, as telling them that they should go back to their country, was a distraction from what was to come, which is Mueller's testimony. And so he was hoping that that would have stretched all the way into Mueller testifying so that persons wouldn't pay much attention to the testimony that is to come. Well, we wait to see what will happen there and to see how it is that the Democrats will treat with the information that comes. Because, you know, impeachment is a big thing that is being... Um, that is being spoken about. Um, in Europe, you will realize that Angela Merkel, who is going to be stepping down, is now shaking. And persons are wondering what is causing, what kind of health condition could be causing her to continuously be shaking in public, you know? So that's something to watch as well to see, because, you know, Germans love to have um, leaders who are healthy, in good health. Um, and that has to do with their history, I say no more. And so they want to know that they have leaders who can actually lead the country. So many Germ Germans are paying attention. Many Europeans are paying attention. Remember that Angela Merkel was the leader of the European Union for years. Yes? Um, and so that is also to be watched. Um, for those who are watching the recent 
Well, the development in the European Union itself, the European Commission, a German is now the head of the Commission again. Well, not again. No. Um, after a backdoor deal to ensure, I believe, to ensure no extremists got the leadership of the Commission. So those are just some of the happenings around the carry around the world. And if you know of any other important um, development anywhere else in the world, feel free to WhatsApp us, feel free to text us on 876-453-1444. That's 876-453-1444. Or you can send your message on our Facebook page at Styles FM. Yes? And we will respond. I see a few persons have joined us in class already. Um, my engineer will assist my um, visual challenge. Um, I'm not blind as DG would want you all to believe. I see who has joined us here. Who is it? Denise from, OK, you know what? Let me just do this here. Denise from Cornwall Barracks, I see you there. She says, good evening, Mr. Chambers. Good evening, Denise. Ricardo Portios, thank you for joining us in class as well. And good evening to you. What's that? One who knows. Good afternoon, Nicholas Chambers, Ricardo Portios of Glen Gough. One who knows a 182 word out of his head. I'm not too sure whether 182 words is about um, Ricardo, but you can tell me. I also see joining us as well. This is Jodian from out of St. Mary. Good afternoon, Mr. Chambers. Ready to be informed. I am happy you are in class and ready to be informed, Jodian. Uh, also on WhatsApp, it's... Who is this here? Kevoy. Kevoy, I haven't seen you in a long time, man. Good evening. Um, he's from St. Thomas. And he, he says... Nice, you hear Cassidy, St. Thomas. We, we can't keep St. Thomas blocked out, you know, so sort that out, Cassidy. All right. Um, also joining us in class is um, Engineer What is the Stop. We also have with us in class Lenky. Thank you for joining us out of more Port Morant in St. Thomas. Um, thank you for being in class, Lenky. And we also have with us, this is check the Okay. All right. And Kemoy, Kemoy, bless up Mr. Chambers, Kemoy Sunning out of Sunny Hill. Kemoy from out of Sunning Hill, St. Thomas. Well, folks, yesterday when we spoke, we were discussing the Registration of Titles Act, and we had gone all the way to Section 32 of the Act. And I promised you that yesterday is Monday. Cassidy, what's happening to me this evening? Um... Uh, we, uh, when we spoke on Monday, I promised you that we would make some effort to have a land surveyor here with us to speak about the importance of um, surveying land in respect of bringing property under the registration of Title Act. Simply put, getting a title for your property. So with us this evening, I have with me Mr. Elfigo Harris of 360 Degrees Surveying Company, Limited. Did, did I get that right, Mr. Harris? That's correct, Mr. Oh, good. Um, he is the um, principal of that company, and he is joining us this evening to discuss um, some of the, the role and purpose of land surveyors, and particularly to share some of his experiences and how he assists persons in his profession, and how the profession assists persons to um, achieve their title when they apply for, for one. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Harris. How are you? Thank you, Mr. Chambers. Well, I'm really elated to be on such an informative program. Mm -hmm. I'm here for the first time, and I was a bit startled mm -hmm. by just your, your broad knowledge. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I need to hang around you more <laughs> to find out what's going on around the world. Thank you for that, Mr. Harris. No, Mr. Harris, you are the principal of 360 Degrees Surveying Company Limited. Tell us a little bit about 360 Degrees. Okay, let, let, let me make one adjustment mm -hmm. to that. 
All right, 360 Degrees has two directors, myself and mm -hmm. Nicholas Dell, mm -hmm. who is also another commission land surveyor. Right. right. The company itself began operations just over a year ago. Mm -hmm. Our main office is in Kingston at 19 Agle Park Road, and we recently start, oper start operating in Port Antonio, Shop 42, Fort George building. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, 360 Degrees. As, as the name would suggest, we cover a, a wide, a wide um, number of services. Mm -hmm. In, among our catalog, we perform cadastral surveys, topographical surveys, engineering surveys, surveys identification report, site and building confirmation, subdivision design, aerial mapping, and just about any need that a client wishes, as long as it has to do with measurement of land. Okay, great. And how long have you been in the profession? Well, my personally, I've been in, in land surveying for over 10 years, mm -hmm. right? Um, I am formerly of a well-known company, mm -hmm. uh, Lafters and Associates, right. who have been in the, in the business um, maybe some 30 odd years or so on. Mm -hmm. um, I have a wide range of knowledge. Um, as it relates to surveying, mm -hmm. um, my partner, Nicholas mm -hmm. Dell, has also been in land surveying for more than 10 years. Um, we just decided last year um, to do a partnership and start a company of our own. Great. Now, we are discussing, Mr. Harris, um, the steps persons have to take in order to um, bring their land, their unregistered land, under the Registration of Titles Act. And one of the things that we came across when we were discussing on the last occasion we were here is that they have to present documents on which they rely. Certainly. So the referee can look at those documents and make a decision in respect of the application that is being made. Now, certainly one of the things that is important is identifying the property and yes. ascertaining the correct description of the property for which the application is made to bring that particular property under the Registration of Titles Act. How does a surveyor, so if I am applying for a title, I go to the lawyer, of course, the lawyer is going to give me some advice. The lawyer says, go to a surveyor. What exactly am I coming to the surveyor for? Well, Mr. Chambers, mm -hmm. you are coming to the surveyor to have your land measured and recorded. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and that is done by the means of uh, after doing the field work, we prepare a pre-check plan mm -hmm. for the property. Right. And this pre-check plan is submitted to the National Land Agency upon approval. Oh, hold on there. You're going fast, man. Pre-check plan. This is a big word you're using on me now, you know. What is this pre-check plan? What do you mean by a pre-check plan? A pre-check plan is a diagram represent of the property mm -hmm. representing what is on ground, all the, the boundaries, mm -hmm. the courses, mm -hmm. the distance and dimensions. Mm -hmm. It represents what is on ground. And it is, um, today, the plan is printed on plastic. Right. And, and once the survey is completed, mm -hmm. then we prepare this plan and we um, lodge it to the survey department and it's referred to as a pre-check diagram. Okay, so when I come to the surveyor and I talk to the surveyor and the surveyor says, yes, again, come, I'm going to come tomorrow morning and we're going to start working. What do you do when you come onto the property? All right, good question. Mm -hmm. Before a surveyor actually enters the property, a surveyor needs to do is, is proper checks, mm -hmm. right? Is reconnaissance and planning. Before, when a client um, first approaches the surveyor, the surveyor will interview that client to find out how is the land held. Mm -hmm. And based on how the land is held, that now determines what the client's needs are. Um, the and when you say how the land is held? The, all right. The, ulti the ultimate aim mm -hmm. at the end of the day is for the client to, have, to register his parcel yes. that he occupies. However, the client may have a diagram from his grandparents ah. or the client or a diagram that has been there for some time. Mm -hmm. Once that diagram, uh, seven years has elapsed, that mm -hmm. diagram is deemed to be outdated. And so the surveyor can know 
re restore this diagram by doing a survey as declaration. When he does the declaration, the surveyor now checks on ground and ensure that what is on ground matches the diagram. If what is on ground is, does not match the diagram, the surveyor now has to do a new diagram. Let me, let me further elaborate, right? Mm -hmm. The surveyor surveys the property. He then overlays what he has surveyed, the walls, the fences, the pegs, with the, the courses and distances on the diagram. So it, what if there are no pegs? If there are no pegs and there are no fences, yes. then the surveyor cannot declare the diagram. He, there has to be something where the surveyor... What, what if the property has never been surveyed? Is the first if, time this we're going to do something? Mm -hmm. Then the surveyor will, will now do a new survey right. for that client. Okay. Right? Um, and another way... So if I understand you correctly, Mr. Harris... When you go to a property, a property may have a diagram that may. is already in existence. Right. And so what you're doing is checking what is on ground with what the previous diagram. That's correct. And the property may also have never been surveyed. Right. And so now you now have to establish the boundaries That's based right. on the instructions from the client. That's right. That's correct? That's okay. correct. Mm -hmm. um, but before you go to do the survey, though, is there anything you do in relation to the neighbors? Um, Certainly. Yes. Once a boundary survey is deemed necessary, uh, then okay. a surveyor must serve notices to mm -hmm. all adjoining parties. Mm -hmm. Right? They know there, the regulation requires at least 10 days notice. Okay. Right? And this is, this is rather very important. Um, so Why is that important? Why I need to know, look for, for my, me and my neighbor in problem, and I, I can't stand, stand the neighbor. I don't want the neighbor to know my business. Why, why, why I need to let her know about my, me and my survey? Is I just want my survey to come and survey my property. I don't want my nosy neighbor to know what I'm doing. Well, having not served the notice, you, know, you, will, res you will end up being in more problems mm -hmm. than if you had served the notice. Now, first of all, um, we are doing a survey. You are my neighbor. We mm -hmm. share the same boundary. My peg mm -hmm. is your peg. Oh, right? I see. Therefore, the neighbor yes. has to know where the boundaries are. Mm -hmm. I, it cannot be a case where I do my survey, my boundary is here, your neighbor, they, their survey, their neighbor, their boundary is there. Mm -hmm. That's how we end up with overlaps oh, and okay. gaps, mm -hmm. even though the, the, the checks don't know by the national land agency will ensure that this will never happen, mm -hmm. you know. But this is how we even end up with further boundary disputes. Right. A surveyor go right. on a property and there are two pigs. Mm -hmm. And so the, the, the neighbor has to be notified. Now, secondly, there may be unknown interest in the properties. Mm -hmm. And this has to come to light during the course of the survey because these, if just covered up, will, will reveal themselves later on. So we want to get it right from the, from the first. Okay. Serve the notices, mm -hmm. have the neighbors turn up to represent, mm -hmm. and have the survey done properly. If there are disputes, it can be rectified on the day. It will save you the time from Mr. Chambers taking a neighbor to court. Mm -hmm. All right. So what if you go to the property to do the survey on behalf of this person? Because I know I'm applying to get my title. And my two neighbors... Two of my neighbors come and say, oh, no survey not going on here. Not a survey going on here. Um, I, I can't just tell them to shut up and go hold them corners and make you continue the way you're doing, right? Well, <laughs> we, in, in Jamaica, we'd like to do that. But mm -hmm. under the law, we cannot do that. Okay. Right? Because remember, surveying is a profession and we are mm -hmm. all professionals. It's not a brute force. It's not an arrogant. Mm -hmm. There is a remedy for all situations. If a surveyor turns up on a property, which has happened several times, mm -hmm. and there is an objection to the survey, right. and the person objecting has a reasonable interest in the property, mm -hmm. meaning they are an adjoining owner, mm -hmm. or they may have interest um, due to a will, mm -hmm. or where the, bo or the boundaries being surveyed is affecting their property and they have objected, then the surveyor it's his duty you now to serve that, that person with, a, with, with an 
objection, mm -hmm. right? And having signed the objection, mm -hmm. the surveyor then will desist from surveying the sector. What if I say to you, I, who you be? Where you come from? I'm not signing nothing, man. Go away from you, I'm not signing nothing. What happens? Well, again, the surveyor will not proceed with the survey once they, once they have objected. Even if but they don't sign? If they have not signed, but he uh, will then mm -hmm. seek to remedy the situation. So they have not signed. The, first of all, the person has to have interest yes. in the property. Mm -hmm. That has to be es established, mm -hmm. right? But they have not, they have, they have decided they are not signing and they don't want to proceed. They don't mm -hmm. want the surveyor yes. to proceed with the survey. Mm -hmm. He's not going to confront this arrogant neighbor. Mm -hmm. He's going to seek for the assistance of whatever authority mm -hmm. could allow him to safely mm -hmm. do his job. So what that means, um, going to the, the, the notifying the local um, police mm -hmm. to come and assist, what that means um, to get some authority from someone else, mm -hmm. or ju just to remedy the situation, but it won't be a case where the surveyor is standing there mm -hmm. and he has to be shielding his instrument. Mm -hmm. Once there's any form of arrogance or objection, then the surveyor will, will okay. halt. So what if while you're surveying, yes, the client says to you, this is where the pig must go in, right here, so, Mr. Surveyor, right here, so. And the neighbor said, no, 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 no. It's three feet over here so that the pig must go. Not there. What do you do in those circumstances? Well, each, each person would have to have a reasonable, a, a, a solid reason as to why they would believe that the pig should be in this position mm -hmm. rather than this position. But at the end of the day, you know, the surveyor was called to perform a job. And this is an, the case that that you, are, you have mentioned is a, is a real life situation. It happens mm -hmm. very often, right? But those two neighbors would have to come to an agreement mm -hmm. as to where that boundary lies. And we, we are actually referring to a new survey where the property has never been surveyed right. and we are doing it for the first time, right? In most instances, I, I personally try to mediate to say, okay, what if we go halfway between mm -hmm. here and there? Is that okay? Mm -hmm. And we try to mediate and have both neighbors agree on, on, on the, the position of the bone. I'm going to throw something at you again because one, when, when I told my, my listeners, you know, that I was going to have a survey, you know, coming to talk, you know, I got all sorts of questions. <laughs> so I'm asking the questions that my listeners ask, ask right. me to ask. So what if the boundary is that you see a peg? Right. And one of the neighbors say, you know, Mr. Servia, I not stop you, you know, but you know that is not where the pig is supposed to be. That is not where it's really here. So the pig's supposed to be, you know. And this person gives you a reason why they believe that the pig shouldn't be where it is, but at another place. And the, your client says to you, well, I, I'm not too sure, you know, but it's here. So I see it, you know, so I think it's here, so it's supposed to be. How do you resolve that? Well, if it can be resolved at all. Well, the, By fact, you. the fact that there is a peg, it means that the, a survey may have been done and mm -hmm. the measurements for that survey would have been recorded right. and, and lodged with the relevant um, agency. What if it wasn't lodged? It was just a sketch plan I get from the surveyor. And, and the, the surveyor put down some peg, but it, the, it wasn't lodged. With, and, and this relates is, to is, with, is, without is, fences? Yes. It's just the peg and ground? Yes. It, is that possible? Yes, that, that certainly. Mm -hmm. That is possible. Right? But this peg, how long has this peg been ah, in this position? Yes, yes. yes right? Yes. And as the, the fact that the peg is still there, it means that the peg has been accepted. Mm -hmm. it, it, may have, it may not have been accepted by who is there on, on the day of the survey, mm -hmm. but it means that at some point in time, the peg has been accepted. And once um, a mark or a physical boundary mm -hmm. is in place for over seven years, it right. is regarded as long-standing. And that is the, the statute. That and comes under the Limitations of Actions Act, I believe. That, that's, that, right. that's it? Okay. That's mm -hmm. right. And, and so the surveyor would more, um, even though 
while deliber deliberating and explaining to the involved parties what um, the course of action is under the law and based on experience or so on, it would more likely that the surveyor will accept that mark mm -hmm. and, and proceed to survey. And so if the, if the disagreement or the dispute as to whether or not the peg should still remain there, that now would be something that would be referred back to the attorney, yes, for, for, for resolution. If there's still disagreement. So if you see a peg there, and based on whatever previous diagram may have been done, accords with what you're seeing there, and the, one of the neighbors is still taking issue with it being there, that then becomes a court, court issue, yes? Well, and... For or that's still something you can mediate? Well, for, for it to become a, a court issue, there has to be, there has to be other other, other um, ingredients mm -hmm. to the situation because even in going to the courts, right, there has to be some diagram or a sketch that is representing what is happening on ground. So some survey would still need to take place and be completed and the survey mm -hmm. will present what is happening. But, but just a single peg on the ground trying to determine where the boundary is, mm -hmm. there has to be some way or some some type of mediation mm -hmm. right and and it it goes back again to what is the information that the that the the, the client brought to the surveyor did right. he bring a diagram did he bring a will what was the area mm -hmm. did he bring a tax receipt mm -hmm. what information did the client take to the surveyor that would prove or disprove the, the area, the size, or the dimension uh, of the property being surveyed. And okay. all of these ingredients um, taken into consideration will, will ultimately help in, in trying to make a decision. And, and many times, you know, Mr. Chambers, yes. the dispute exists due to ignorance. In, and once the surveyor is able to prove or explain more than likely, the client will, will then come to an agreement and they will be able to move forward. Because even a dispute between two neighbors, right, the overall understanding must be that this survey, even though we, we are contracted by this client, mm -hmm. the surveyor is a professional and mm -hmm. he's objective and he's doing this survey based on his skill yeah, and, right. and his knowledge and whether it is the neighbor or it is the client mm -hmm. that employs the surveyor, the end result is the same. The surveyor is non-biased in doing his work. Good. And if this boundary is not resolved, it does not only affect the client, but it affects the neighbor because no one can move forward mm -hmm. until it is resolved as it regards to the boundary. So let's say now you have resolved the issue. Because now you're telling me that a surveyor is not just a surveyor. A surveyor is now a mediator. Dispute, you um, have to resolve disputes. So it's a lot of skills that come with being a surveyor. Eh? Being a professional. A professional surveyor. Certainly. Good. Now, let's say that you resolve the challenges that you may find on ground, whether it's between neighbors or whatever else. And you have done this survey and you have produced this sketch plan. The next step you say is to lodge it with the... National and agents. Mm -hmm. And wh why are we lodging it there to do what? What, what are you carrying it down there to do? Well, remember, when, when we do this, this survey, mm -hmm. right, it cannot, this, a survey have, after being completed and the, the plan is approved, approved, it then becomes a public record, record, right? We cannot do a survey, have the document, and... We are the only persons that know about the survey, oh. or we are the only persons that have the document. Right. Right? We must remember that um, having all of these records is also a part of our national development. And whoever comes later on to survey, mm -hmm. they, they should be able to get a copy of this diagram mm -hmm. or, or this title or whatever document was deposited. Mm -hmm. And so it will now assist the other person in surveying their parcel and so on. And when it goes even further, after it is approved and it goes further, um, while the application is being made, then they can now draw back on these records to ensure that, yes, it is 
in fact authentic and, and be able to complete the process. Now, when you say once approved, yes? So if it is approved, who is approving it? it when you lodge it, who is this person who is approving it? Is it a ghost? Is it who? It is, it is approved by the director of surveys. Ah, I see. And the director of surveys is at the National Land Agency. Right, he's at the National okay. Land Agency. And when the director of survey approves it, what happens next? After the director of survey approves the diagram, mm -hmm. then it will, the, the surveyor will be notified mm -hmm. of its approval, whether it is um, deposited to the mailbox mm -hmm. or if he, has, uh, if he has someone that comes there regularly to check on his plans. Mm -hmm. But it, it, the approved plan is returned back to the surveyor, and the surveyor will now issue his client with the approved diagram. What is on that approved diagram? The, the approved diagram will have at least three stamps mm -hmm. on it. Yes, to ensure I always see those three stamps. Yeah, tell us where them three stamps to are. To ensure it's authenticity, mm -hmm. right? One stamp will have the PE number. Once a plan is submitted to the National Land Agency, it is immediately assigned a PE number. This stands for Plan Examination Number. Ah. Someone yes. who is investigating whether or not their survey has been submitted or is in the process mm -hmm. or want to find out where it is at, they will always refer to this plan using the PE number. Okay. It's usually at the top of the page, the right hand. Mm -hmm. right, it's imprinted. Um, the second plan, the second stamp, mm -hmm. is, is normally a stamp that says computing. computing yes. Right? This stamp says that the plan has been checked by the national land agency so they go out and do a check to see if what you did was correct yes ah. they they have their means of checking every single diagram i see that yes. is submitted so then there is a it's almost like a vetting to ensure that Cert what you are putting there is so certain so the client gets an extra layer of, of, of certainty I yes, the, the National Land Agency will, will do their independent check before, because all of these plans are then used to form a national geodatabase. And they won't input a, a, a survey that has not been verified. Great. Right? The third stamp mm -hmm. is the stamp by the director of surveys with his signature affixed. Mm -hmm. If all three stamps are not on your diagram, then something is wrong. Re repeat that for our listeners. Uh, say it for them again. If all three stamps are not on your diagram, mm -hmm. then something is wrong. Are you hearing that, listeners? So for those of you who have your diagram, run, go for it. Take it up and look at it. It must have three stamps on it. And if it doesn't have those three stamps, you perhaps need to check out what is going on and to see whether or not this document is an authentic document, yes? Um, we have a question there. Cassidy, I can't read. I'm blind. But what, what is he saying here? Good um, info. Good, good info. Got that. Wonderful. We thank you. Um, I see somebody else there mentioned something. Um, Cassidy, let us see if it is a question for our guest. Um, no? All right. Good. Now, earlier you said something, and I want to pick you up on that. You said it is seven years for a survey diagram. Yes? Right. What if the seven year pass? My money, all of my money, when I pay to get this diagram, is of no my, my, my good, good diagram not good again? Well, it depends on if everything on the property remains as though it was on the date of survey. Mm -hmm. So the surveyor now comes, he measures. If the marks are missing, the surveyor will re replace the marks. And, and the declaration, he then prepares a, a document on a legal size. Um, page testifying mm -hmm. that he's a commission land survey and the marks on ground matches the right. plan, states the plan number he signs mm -hmm. and, and the uh, justice of the peace also signs and that document is submitted along with the diagram in the okay. title application. Now, once I get my diagram, me not have to do anything more. 
Once me have my diagram, me can show now say this is my land. Cause me have my diagram, right? So me no need to do nothing more. Me done with lawyer, I'm done with surveyor now. Cause well, me have my diagram. So this show says my land. That's well, correct? The, the diagram it, 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 it's only the first step. Uh -huh. Right? Because a diagram represents what is on ground. A diagram does not prove ownership of the land. Say that slowly for listeners again, a diagram does not a do A diagram what? represents what is on ground and it does not prove ownership. You're, you're hearing that, castle. listeners. It does not prove ownership. So having a diagram is not a document that will say you are the owner of the land. All right, continue. The, the only document mm -hmm. that declares the owner, the absolute owner, of a parcel of land is a title. You hear that again, listeners? So it's the title that you need. The survey diagram is one of many steps that you will have to take on the journey to getting that title. But your diagram, folks, who are listening, does not say you are the owner. And there seems some, a lot of persons who are under that misconception that the diagram is their title. Is, is the ultimate. Yes. And they'll keep it all it there mm -hmm. to their heart. For years. For and years. do nothing more. It is not your title. It is simply a diagram that says you, you have done certain things to show where your boundaries are. So what if there's a title and uh, I want a surveyor to come? And I, I, I got my title, but I've, I didn't build my wall. I didn't build my fence. And I'm not too sure which part I must build my wall. What am I asking the surveyor for now? Is it a diagram I'm asking for? Or what, 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 what am I asking the surveyor you, you're for? You're now asking for a boundary reestablishment, also called a boundary repeg. And, and this is a good question, um, Mr. Chambers, because many times, and this is one of the the problems that sir, one of the challenges that a surveyor has sometimes, mm -hmm. right? A client <coughs> comes in and they're the only, they know they need a survey, but they are not educated in the different types of surveys. So for everything for them is a survey. It's a and diagram. Mm -hmm. is, is a survey. Mm -hmm. So a client will call a surveying office. Good afternoon, sir. I need a survey. Uh, okay, what type of survey are you? Are you? Um, well, a survey. Aren't you a surveyor? We need a survey. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, so this is where a surveyor no, will we'll try to explain and educate the client that, okay, what are you trying to do? And so I have my title. I have this piece of property. I bought it five years ago. I have my title. My title have a diagram at the back of it. Let me see one drawing with one square looking thing here. I, I, I don't know. I think that's a diagram. But now I want to build my wall. Right. So I'm not too sure where the wall must go because I don't know for no type of work, you know. So what I want is for the surveyor to now tell me now where I must build this wall. So what is it that right. I'm asking for? Are, you are now <laughs> asking the surveyor for a boundary mm -hmm. re-establishment ah, or a boundary re -pick. Mm -hmm. And what does that entail? That entails the surveyor doing is executing his, his due diligence to determine the precise position of mm -hmm. those boundaries mm -hmm. based on the available el evidence mm -hmm. on ground to the best of his knowledge and his skill. And he will now repeg, mm -hmm. meaning he will now put marks, boundary marks, whether it be steel in the ground or monuments, mm -hmm. but he will put a mark to determine, for, to identify to the client where his, bon his or her boundary is mm -hmm. so they can construct their proper fences. Okay. Now, what if I'm selling my property or I'm purchasing a, purchasing a piece of property? Let's say I'm purchasing a piece and NHD tells me that I must go and speak with a surveyor. Yes? Um, before, uh, and I must get something from the surveyor to carry back to the NHD. What exactly am I coming to you for? You're now coming to the surveyor for a surveyor's identification report. And a surveyor's identification report is a document that describes the parcel. It, it checks. The, it, it will then show the nature of the boundary, mm -hmm. whether it's link fence, wire fence, concrete wall, 
it will show whether the boundaries, the physical boundaries on ground, mm -hmm. if they are aligned with the registered boundary okay. or if there is any encroachment on, on the property. The mm -hmm. surveyor's ident identification report will also positively identify the property. Right. Meaning the title that, that the person is, is using for the sale. Is this the land on ground? That is first and foremost. Have, have you had those experiences where the person carries you to one property and says, this is the property? And when you check, he said, no, boss, but this is not the property. Have you, have you ever had any of those experiences? It's, it's a very common occurrence. Really? Mr. Chambers. I mean, ab about four years ago, I went um, to, to do a survey as report mm -hmm. for a, a parcel. It was only one acre, right? Mm -hmm. And it, it turned out that the parts and there was the realtor sign was there everything was there mm -hmm. this is the property being sold and mm -hmm. i came to the location and it was it was it was a good thing that i did my due diligence and i did my checks because even when you are driving in front of me, now, Mr. Chambers, mm -hmm. I like to find the, the location for myself i see that means if if something is wrong mm -hmm. i will know Right. Uh, that is evident coming to the studio, right? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> you yes, you I... know what he did, listeners? I told him, you know, that, listen, I'm going to meet you at the front of your office building there at Farmer Building, and we drive down together. The gentleman here <laughs> find Bonebrook for himself. It, yes, man. It's, it's, it's just in it. Right. Um, as a surveyor, a surveyor will, will firstly find the property, mm -hmm. right? So if something is wrong. All right, back to the scenario. Right, and in having in doing the surveyor's report, I determined that the, the property and the title is actually the adjoining lands. So I did the surveyor's report mm -hmm. and it had the incorrect volume and folio number. Mm -hmm. And the the attorney called and said, um, Mr. Surveyor, mm -hmm. um, something is wrong because we sent you a title. Mm -hmm. And you did the, the surveyor's report on a different land. What is happening? And I, I explained that, Miss, mm -hmm. I have two surveyor's report. I have the surveyor's report for the title you sent, mm -hmm. and I have the surveyor's report for the property that was shown to me. Mm -hmm. The attorney contacted the owners who were overseas, and, and they were blatant that, listen, this surveyor mm -hmm. must have gotten his bearings wrong mm -hmm. or something, but there's no way they could have lived on the property for 20 years. Are and you and know that, and, and in fact, these two, the, the two owners have been friends for over 40 years. They purchased their property at the same time, ah. and they used the same attorney yes. and did the title. Mm -hmm. So now we see where the so, error was so, so, made. So, so they, they, they actually switched properties right. unknowingly. It, during, yes. during the application mm -hmm. process, right? I am not sure where the error mm -hmm. was made, whether it is submitting or the persons who granting it or right. whoever. But the two persons end up with a title being the adjoining lot. Oh, but okay. because they, they both got their titles and they, they I mean they are fine. They right. just yes. they just lived. Mm -hmm. And so um they just enjoy the property until one person decided that they were going to sell. Mm -hmm. And um and they they, they the hurtful thing about it is that one person had actually developed their property lovely, mm -hmm. whereas the other person was <laughs> mostly doing a little farming mm -hmm. on their property. <laughs> um, needless to say, they, they, in the end, they were mm -hmm. able to resolve, resolve it, by, it by actually doing a um, transfer Right. and working out their, their differences. Mm -hmm. But it does happen. It's a very common occurrence. I see. So a surveyor cannot take it for granted. Mr. Harris, I have five minutes left. And I am realizing that an hour is not enough. Yes? <laughs> so I am putting you on the spot, Mr. Harris, to give a commitment to my listeners that you will come back. Because we have a whole lot more to talk about. Because I heard you mention some things. Topographical. I hear cadast cadastral. I hear a lot of things you spoke about. Uh, the aerial mapping. Uh, we, we need to know what these things are now. But we time up. We're running out of time. Certainly, Mr. Chambers. Thank you for having me. It has been a very interesting program. 
Certainly, I'll be, I'll be back. I'm just around the corner. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, there's another commission land surveyor outside that um, also wanted to get into the studios. So the next time around, yes, you'll have more surveyors mm -hmm. here to answer many more questions. Wonderful. Well, listener, I, I see a listener asked a question. Let me see if I can address it quickly with a few minutes that's left. The person says, what would happen if I build a house on someone else's land? Can that person claim the house? Well, you just heard what the surveyor <laughs> said. What you can do, what can happen is that an application can be made to do a transfer so that um so that the the, the right you you you're on the right property but um you perhaps need to speak to an attorney and you perhaps are going to need the services of mr mr harris but um um speak to an attorney to see how that attorney can assist what if one surveyor established one boundary another one came and established a different boundary mr harris in the few minutes this is also this has happened before and um, the institutions will ask for a third surveyor to, to arbitrate. I see, I see. So there you go. Um, perhaps you pr would need a third opinion to see what is happening with the, with the diagram, the, the opinion you got from the previous two surveyors. Folks, we are out of time. I know it's an interesting topic, and I noticed that it was down to the latter part of the program we started seeing the flood of questions coming in unfortunately for those who are on our facebook live we can't address some of the questions that you've asked here we can't address all the questions that are asked in um, on whatsapp and um, so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to invite you to join us again when we will have a surveyor sitting with us and continuing this discussion. I, I, I don't, I'm not going to put him on the spot, but since he says a whole heap of survey out there, hopefully we can get some money in here on Monday. <coughs> Certainly. To, 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 to be with us to continue this discussion. So we, we want to continue that discussion and try to uh, answer all your questions. I think this is an important question though, because I see it many times. Right. Um, so this is something that I really would want somebody to expound on and say what could have caused a situation like this and, and how it's resolved. And I, I, you know? did, I did um, touch on it a yes. little bit mm -hmm. where, it, while, while we're referring to re-establishing boundaries, right. where the surveyor will re-establish the boundary based on the available evidence found and based on his skill and his knowledge right. as a professional. Well, Cassidy, you're running me now. I want to thank my sponsors. I want to thank my sponsors who have made this program possible. Uh, Native Audio Stage and Lighting, Braham's Tech Circle, TAS Property Appraisers Company Limited, bringing quality service to you. Uh, MT Landscaping Services from out of New York, and you can find them on Francis Lewis Boulevard, Queens, New York. And if you want to contact MT Landscaping Services, um it's three four seven three eight four zero four six two three i also want to thank my contributors to the program toya's nails at shop number six rosemary plaza morin bay st thomas and if you want to contact toya it's eight seven six four two six five zero